Oh, Canada, my home and native land. Well, not really, because I'm not actually from there. But as far as WWE is concerned, you don't really have to be from somewhere in order to be heralded as being from that place. Which, bizarrely enough, was especially true in the mid-2000s and our neighbors to the north. All thanks to a strategy employed by one Vincent Candy McMahon. And all that is the topic of this episode. Because today... Thank you so much for the support over on Patreon to Nigo Montoya and Ron Hawthorne. To get your own Patreon shout out, please go over and sign up on my Patreon page. Blame Canada. Not only was this a song in the South Park movie, but apparently this was also a way of thinking that Vince McMahon once had. And I'm not talking about the Montreal screw job. Or Law Resistance, or Brett's heel turn in general. You know what? Let's just take a trip down memory lane. Let's go all the way back to WrestleMania 20, which surprisingly is not that far away from being the halfway point of WrestleMania now. Doesn't that make you feel old? Now, this was a historic night for WWE for a multitude of reasons. Not only was it the 20th WrestleMania, and also the last time that WrestleMania would ever be featured in Madison Square Garden, as well as being the night where Chris Benoit would finally win a world championship. Unless, of course, you count WCW. Anyway, there was a whole lot going on for this pay-per-view, so it's real easy to overlook some of the smaller details. And one such thing would be that when Chris Benoit won this world championship, he did so being billed, not from his native home of Canada, but instead being billed from Atlanta, Georgia. Now, Benoit was originally born in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, but he grew up in Edmonton, Alberta. And for the majority of his career, that's where he was billed as being from. However, all that changed on the night of WrestleMania 20. As just a roar prior on March 8th, he was still being said to have been from Edmonton. Prior to that, and remember, during this time, it was the first WWE brand split, and they took that pretty seriously, which means that they had brand exclusive pay per views. And so, that year, before WrestleMania, the February pay per view was No Way Out, which was SmackDown exclusive. The pay per view before that was the Royal Rumble, which Benoit won in order to go to WrestleMania to get his title shot. And the Rumble, of course, is co branded. And while most competitors aren't announced when they entered the Royal Rumble, Chris Benoit, being number one, did receive the full entrance treatment, but Howard Finkel simply said that Chris Benoit was representing SmackDown, as he hadn't transferred over to Raw yet because he would use his Royal Rumble win in order to switch brands. The pay-per-view preceding the Royal Rumble was Raw exclusive, while Benoit was still a part of the blue brand, and before that, it was Survivor Series, another co-branded show, where Benoit was indeed announced as being from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. But now, let's go forward from WrestleMania 20, where the next pay-per-view was WWE Backlash, and the newly crowned champion was announced as being Edmonton, Alberta's own Chris Benoit. Although the catch here was, the pay-per-view itself was in Edmonton. Following that, at the next pay-per-view Benoit was a part of, which was Bad Blood in June, he wasn't given any specific location at all. Then, after that, we move on to SummerSlam, another co-branded show, which took place in Toronto, Canada. And there, Benoit was announced as now residing in Atlanta, Georgia. And of course, this was also the night where he would drop the championship to Randy Orton. So how do you like that? From the night that he won the championship to the night that he dropped it, both events had him listed as being an Atlantean. And of course, this trend would continue. As the following WrestleMania, WrestleMania 21, he was still being billed as being from Georgia, as was also the case on June 19th, 2007, on an episode of ECW on Sci-Fi. And the significance of this show in particular is that it would be Chris Benoit's last televised match. And he was still being announced as being from Atlanta. Now, at the time, one of the excuses given as the reason why this allegedly was going on as it was claimed that Benoit hadn't lived in Canada for about 10 years at that point. However, that's not the whole story, but we'll get into that later on. For now, let's move on to another Canadian, Chris Jericho, who was actually born in Manhasset, New York, and his father, Ted Irvine, played for the New York Rangers. Although, after his father retired, the family would move back to Winnipeg, where his parents were originally from and where Jericho would grow up. And while Chris Jericho does hold dual citizenships, he has made it more than clear that he considers himself a Canadian. However, that didn't stop WWE from saying
saying that he's from Manhasset, although it took him a little longer to do so than it did for Benoit, as Y2J maintained his announced Canadian status all the way up until Bad Blood, which was the first pay-per-view that announced him as being from New York. The following SummerSlam, he received no specific billing in terms of his location, but at WrestleMania 21, this would be the first mania that would claim him as being from Manhasset. This would continue until August 22, 2005, where it was specifically stated that Jericho was born in Manhasset. Now, the significance of this bout was that it was a your fired match, which of course Jericho was on screen in order to justify him taking some time off. He wouldn't return to WWE until the latter half of 2007. Now, his first match back was somewhat impromptu, as he didn't receive an announcement as he was just coming down for a promo, which turned into an on the spot match against Santino Morella, so no location was given. But that really didn't matter all that much, as his first pay per view bout since coming back was against Randy Orton, where they simply simply just didn't say that he was from anywhere, which is strange because Randy Orton was still announced as being from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in at 226 pounds, Chris Jericho! And from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 245 pounds, and this trend continued, as WrestleMania 26 also had Jericho as being billed from nowhere, even though Edge, who is also from Canada, did get a point of origin. From Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and weighing in at 227 pounds, Chris! Jericho! This would suspiciously continue all the way until May 31st, 2010 on an episode of Monday Night Raw, which took place in Austin, Texas, where Jericho was finally once again billed as being from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, which is where he continues to be hailed from even today. Now, going back to Edge, what was really peculiar was that he was indeed billed as being from Toronto, Canada, as that's the only place that he was ever billed from, as was also the case with Christian and Trish Stratus. However, the same cannot be said for yet another Toronto native, Gail Kim. And while there are some who justify WWE's decisions when it comes to Jericho and Benoit, stating that Jericho was born in New York and Benoit did live in Atlanta, the same can't be said for Gail, who was simply announced as being from Korea. That's right, just Korea. And no, she wasn't born there and nor did she live there. Oh, and an interesting side note, Chris Jericho and Gail Kim also have something else in common too. Not only are they both from Canada, but had their billing location changed, but they also kind of share a last name. As inferred earlier, Chris Jericho's real last name is Irvine, and Gail Kim's married name is Irvine, after she married chef Robert Irvine. And as far as I know, Robert Irvine and Chris Jericho are not related. Alright, now, with all this being said, what exactly was the logic here? Well, I'm about to tell you, but before I do, please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel as a member of the Know-It-All Nation. Anyway, years after all this happened, it was reported that Vince McMahon's way of thinking was that fans could never truly embrace a babyface that was Canadian. That's right, despite being a global corporation, allegedly Vince McMahon believed that their primary American audience could never truly accept someone who wasn't American. With Chris Benoit being a new world champion, and an experimental one at that, the idea was that WWE wanted to give him as much momentum as possible, and in Vince McMahon's mind, that included making him American. Now, this does track alongside with Chris Jericho, who at the time had just turned babyface after having a falling out with both Christian and Trish Stratus, who had had just turned heel. However, this doesn't 100% make sense for Edge. While Edge did play heel for much of the six years where Chris Jericho was being hailed as either being a New Yorker or not from anywhere at all, he was also a babyface too, and Trish Stratus would also go face again as well. But regardless, both of them never lost their Toronto status. But going beyond that, was Vince McMahon right? Well, when we look at wrestlers such as Finn Balor and Drew McIntyre, who are immensely over despite being non-American, I think it goes to show that Vince was not exactly correct. And as far as Canada is concerned, let's just take a look at Edge. Even today, the guy is super over with WWE audiences, showcasing why this rule really never made any sense. Well, there you go, that really weird time in WWE where they stopped billing some Canadian wrestlers as being Canadian. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section, and please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and that you'll give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you so much to all my awesome Patreon supporters, and thank you for watching, and as always, Dave knows.